are three things that people will see when they come to LinkedIn. They're going to see your personal photo. They're going to see the name that's right beside your, uh, they're going to see your name, and then they're going to see a description. You have to use a clear photo that connects with the people who you want to hire you, right? So if you are a golfer, if you fish, if you have some other type of hobby, it's fine for your LinkedIn profile to show that. You just got to make sure that people can see that it's you. Lots of lawyers don't take advantage of this section. Now, I, I do legal marketing, right? So this is what my headline says. I want you to have a headline that tells about your practice. So maximize this space by giving a description of your practice. So LinkedIn allows you to, to link to three websites or web pages. What you want to do is think about what three places you want people to go to when they find you on LinkedIn. Is it the About Us section on your law firm's page, or rather the About You section on your law firm's page? Do you have a newsletter, a client newsletter that you send out? That's another place. Are you actively using another social network like Twitter? Right. These are places that you can link to. And what's even more exciting is you can write a description of what those places um, are or what they're doing. Here's what I tell our clients to do. Make the description a call to action. Let people know that they can get something, do something, or learn something. So take advantage of this real estate. Your summary section is a place where you can tell your story. You can tell your firm's story. I suggest you do it in a way that shows that you are, of course, the competent, capable, successful lawyer that you are without doing anything that's going to get you in trouble with the bar because you know that past results are not indicative of future performance. You have to you know, have all of your disclaimer. You want to make sure that you do that. Um, however, you can tell your story in a way that is going to um, build a connection. When you're writing your summary, you want to use something that we call keywords, keyword phrases. Raise your hands if you've ever heard of a keyword. OK, good. Most of you all know keywords. So keyword phrases, again, just those key phrases that describe what you do using the language that people are likely to be searching for when they're looking for what you do. Your summary section is a place where you want to have keyword phrases. Why? Because LinkedIn will pick up on these phrases, and they'll help you show up in LinkedIn internal search results and also external search results, so search results on search engines like Google and the like. The more keywords you have in your profile, the more um, sections of your profile you have filled out, the more groups that are directly on point that you join, the higher you're going you're gonna to turn up in a search for terms related to what you do inside of LinkedIn. A vanity URL is simply a custom name that you can give people so that they can go directly to your LinkedIn profile. I want the vanity profile to be your name if you can still get it. Try your full name, try an initial, try uh, first initial, last name. If not, try the name of your law firm, last name firm. I want you to have a vanity URL because if you're going to use this platform, I want you to make it easy for people to get to the platform. LinkedIn allows you to tell everybody what you've written that you find interesting. Your books, articles that you've written that you want people to know about, go to the publication section, right, and list them out with a little bit of information about it. So again, we talked about how can LinkedIn help you build a personal brand, help people find you and learn a whole lot about you so that the only logical next step is to give you a call, is to use these features to give people great content. How many folks in here do presentation, PowerPoint presentations to industry groups, to other people? I want you to get more uh, leverage out of that time. There is a tool, it's called slideshare.net. 
slideshare.net. And that is connected to LinkedIn. Slideshare.net is a place where you can for free upload these wonderful PowerPoint presentations that you shared with industry groups that are sitting in your hard drive not doing anything for you. You can upload them to Slideshare and you can connect them to your LinkedIn profile. We want you to have LinkedIn recommendations. I put three recommendations up here for specific purposes. Each of these recommendations talks about something different in my business. You want your LinkedIn recommendations. Now, people have to give them to you. But when you talk about, when you ask folks for recommendations, you want to think about what kind of work you've done with them so that you can have a variety of, of recommendations. And you want to give recommendations. Here is what I want you to know about giving recommendations. When you give someone a recommendation, that recommendation shows up on their profile. Now, why is that interesting? Because if you've used a compelling photo, then people will see you, and they'll see the thoughtful words that you've written, and they're likely to click the button to see who you are. And now you're going to have a fully optimized profile for them to see. Does that sound helpful? Yes, so give recommendations thoughtfully and strategically. Think about who in your network you can, now, again, now you write a recommendation for someone, you're tying yourself to their brand. I would like for you to have three categories of LinkedIn groups that you're going to look for. One would be alumni groups. Right, because you can connect with people who can either refer business to you or people who can be your clients, um, those big two groups of people in your alumni groups. I want you to look at industry groups, whatever industry you're practicing in, I want you to take a look at those groups and then bar associations like the DC Bar so that you can connect with your colleagues. These are the three categories of groups that I want you to look at. I want you to spend some time to find the groups that fit in these categories where the groups are active. Active meaning there are at least two or three posts per week. So I wanna make sure that that's what you have. When you get into the groups, this is what you wanna do and this is how we'll end it. Here's how you make a splash or you become magnetic in a LinkedIn group. First, you listen to the conversations that are going on. You can ask questions. Ask questions of people who are posting content. That's how you're engaging in the content and you're raising your profile with those people and you're inspiring other people to, con to, to comment. Remember that we've said the reason you're on LinkedIn is to connect with people. So you wanna connect with people. You wanna learn something new. You wanna share information, not promote, share information. You're building a connection. And then you want to look for the right moment to invite a person to connect with you out offline. One of the big, big reasons for using this tool is to connect. <laughs>